first, uh, first of all, fa hello everybody and thanks for coming. Uh, we're going to speak about the role of finance as engine for economic growth and national security. Uh, when finance doesn't always have the best image in the media and the newspaper, it is truly an asset for a country and its population. Uh, we're going to focus on Nigeria today, and it is often referred to as a giant of Africa for its large population and economy, but it's still subject to violence and terrorism, and we're going to see how finance and a banking system can help finding a little bit this with our speaker today, Bamidali Ali. Hi, uh, nice to meet you. I'm sorry to be presenting in English, but because of uh, all my sources are in English and I can't translate that in, in French, so everything will be in English, but I can answer questions in, um, in French as well, if required. Uh, so the role of finance as agent for economic growth and national security. Going forward, OECD banks will be restricted from investing in infrastructure projects in frontier markets uh, as they, they have to set aside more capital um, because of the Basel II regulation. However, uh, investment infrastructure projects can underpin economic growth further and create jobs. Thus, the financial regulatory authorities uh, can find innovative ways to secure funding to maintain a sustainable economic growth by channel uh, channeling financing into extractive industries. Uh, and one of the main issues of Nigeria is to create jobs for the large young and unemployed population to prevent them from being attracted towards extrem extremist movements or terrorism. First, the Nigerian banking uh, system could evolve to reduce uh, financial, um, to improve financial exclusion, um, to improve financial inclusion, as the country remained largely underbanked. Um, and uh, it is important to enhance access to financial services for SMEs and low-income households by changing the way property deeds are reported to be used as collateral by creating credit bureaus, for instance. Strengthening access to personal funding could help the Nigerian economy to diversify, to focus on improving technology, skill acquisition, high, higher productivity, and the industrial process of the agricultural sector to reduce food import and enhance food security. Secondly, uh, the privatization of state enterprise could be viewed as an engine for growth by improving efficiency and corporate governance to attract foreign uh, direct investments and savings from the diaspora, or they could represent a threat to economic security. La uh, lastly, the, the, the tenet of the social market wirtschaft or social market economy could be adopted by, um, by Nigeria to ensure economic security by combining private uh, enterprise and state intervention. So, um, so I'm going to start with, for, with uh, describing the, the Nigerian banking system. So currently, the Nigerian banking system um, has experienced uh, a series of transformation. Before the crisis of 2009, the system was largely overbanked, but the access to banking products was not widespread among the majority of Nigerian citizens. Uh, first, we will review the structure of the Na Nigerian banking system and this evolution. Uh, we will wonder why the Nigerian stock exchange should demutualize to support the funding of the economy and to contribute to the economic prosperity. And finally, we will analyze the ways to ease access to retail banking products for the wider population and to stimulate demand and to add further diversification of the economy. So currently, the Nigerian banking system consists of 22 commercial banks. But not all, all of them are listed on the NSC. And there are also uh, some development banks, uh, discount houses, financial companies, merchant banks, microfinance banks, one non-interest bank, and 20 primary mortgage institutions. So the, the financial sector is kind, uh, very um, diversified. Um, and some uh, during the uh, credit crisis, some banks were um, taken over by the AMCOM, which is the Asset Management Company of Nigeria, which was created as a bank bank in 2010 to clean up the banking system and to make it more efficient. And some banks were forced to, to merge between each other. And in a sh uh, short term, um, the view um, 
in the short term, during the 2009-2010, the um, uh, capitalization was at risk due to rapid expansion of banks, uh, domestically and internationally, and the continued concentration of underwritten loans by, uh, by industry and geography. The majority of the loans are underwritten towards the oil sector and big corporate companies in Nigeria, and also to some uh, politicians. And given the lack of depth for the capital markets, um, banks are mainly funded by customer deposits in, uh, in Nigeria. But that's the same across uh, frontier markets. Uh, in 2014, the Nigerian economy grew by 6.3%, and, and 2015 by 3.1%. Uh, although it was forecast to be, um, the economic growth forecast was 6.7%. And uh, the economy, Nigerian economy str uh, grew strongly thanks to the um, country's oil and gas resources. But for this year, the forecast is uh, due to be 3.3%. Um, and by 2017, IF, the Institute of International Finance, um, expects the Nigerian economy to grow by 3.7%, which is a, a significant drop in view of the the expansion needs and of the Nigerian economy. And so, as we can, as the majority of us know, the, the majority of the revenue um, of Nigeria comes from the oil and gas business, and the economy is thus prone to any price swings from the global demand of oil and gas. And uh, in uh, having said that, in spite of the dislocation of the, in the global asset market since 2018, and then uh, the sovereign debt crisis in Europe, the Nigerian economy and the banking system r remain uh, insulated from the, and resilient. In a, in a medium term, the performance indicator is expected to remain stable, thanks to uh, stable, uh, sustained economic growth. And um, economic growth and the cross-border expansion of banks to diversify their revenue and risk profile. However, banking penetration uh, remains low in Nigeria and the rest of the sub-Saharan Africa, which represent tremendous opportunities for growth. And, um, and in, a, in a report, so the International Monetary Fund has recommended the Nigerian regulatory authority to strengthen its robust oversight due to the to associated liquidity risk from international expansions of banks, business activities, cross-border credit risk, and new operating and regulatory environment faced by these banks. So we will now cover the case for demutualization of the, of the NSE. According to the NEC website, the Nigerian Stock Exchange was founded in 1960, and today uh, services the second largest financial sector in sub-Saharan Africa. The NEC, uh, registered as a company limited by guarantee, is licensed under the Investment and Securities Act and is regulated by the uh, SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission of Nigeria. The exchange is a funding member and executive committee member of the African Securities Exchange Association, an affiliate member of the World Federation of Exchanges, and an affiliate member of the International Organization of Securities Commission. His business model consists in providing exchange services, listing and trading services, as well as electronic clearing, settlement and delivery, and data discrimination services. It serves uh, customers throughout Nigeria. According to Bloomberg, the NSC All the Share Index uh, was formulated in 1984 with a base value of 100. Uh, only, sh only ordinary shares are included in the computation of the index. Uh, the index is value-relative and is computed daily. Uh, the disparity between the intraday official close value is due to the exchange, um, exchange uh, limitation. As of the 16th of um, March, uh, as of the 14th of March 2016, uh, uh, the value of the, the volume of the uh, uh, NSC was 173.3 million naira, and is which and has been decreasing for the last few uh, few months uh, rapidly, and there are uh, 179 members. Uh, 
looking at the various uh, stock exchanges in the past 10 to 15 years, more and more stock exchanges representing a significant regional hub have demutualized. The process of demutualization has had to overcome regulatory obstacles. Taking a recent example from, uh, from the Mint group, Mexico, in, uh, Indonesia, Nigeria, and Turkey, the uh, Mexican uh, exchange was demutualized in, uh, in the last two, three years. The advantage for demutualization are immense, more funding opportunity for corporates and businesses, a more open shielding structure, significant improvement in corporate governance, more investment opportunities to attract FDIs um, and the for, uh, high net worth individuals, um, foreign uh, portfolio managers and uh, foreign institutional investors with the aim of uh, um, with the aim of diversifying the investment portfolio into the frontier markets. Whilst countries tend to be reluctant in attracting foreign shareholders, in the case of NSC, whose business model is, is to be driven by investment in tech, new technologies, uh, foreign, shale, um, foreign shielding could, uh, could further reduce operational risk and, and the reputational risk. As exchange are systemically important and under increasing scrutiny from the public, and subject to very strict regulation, which will be stricter as policy, uh, policymakers require central clearing counterparty to mitigate risk in a great number of financial markets. Uh, foreign shielding could uh, not only result in capital transfer and knowledge, um, but also bring new investment management methods, skills, and increase the competition regionally. And the at the, and the, at the scale of the African continent. Some capital market professionals have also observed some uh, new business opportunities in the area of the insurance sector, such as microfinance, the insurance of uh, the issuance of Sharia compliance products to attract investors from the Middle East, Malaysia, Indonesia, and North Africa, or diaspora bonds or funds to channel non-concessional funding into the real economy. Um, channels, um, channel of savings from retail customers and the diaspora, which has, so, uh, which has shown a keen interest in investing in Nigeria and promoting Nigeria as an investment and professional destination, could circumvent the regulatory hurdles faced by banks in OECD countries in uh, investing in frontier markets. With the coming introduction of the ba uh, Basel III rules, a new regulatory rules adopted locally to avert a new banking crisis. Improving the financial intermediation locally could lead to lower reliance of FDIs and the concessional foreign aid for the SME sector and for them to thrive in order to create jobs for the populous youth. All in all, in spite of the lack of depth of the Nigerian capital markets in comparison with the South African one, Nigeria's key assets owing to the high literacy rates across the, the rest of West Africa. Thanks to the experience of the Nigerian diaspora and the level of education of many Nigerians, the NSC has the ability to become a significant regional hub for financing local companies intending to expand within the ECOWAS. For instance, to allow a more uh, efficient allocation of capital from financial resources. And it is common knowledge that in intra-regional trade remains very low in most regional economic associations and unions on the scale of the continent. Finally, the Nigerian government um, in the past has been, um, the previous administration, has been successful in improving its image and that of the country as an investment destination, thanks to the works and negotiation skills of the former finance minister Ngozi Nkonjo Iwala, the and the she, had, um, she obtained uh, additional debt relief from the, with the Paris Club and, and the London Club respectively in 2006 and 2007 and thanks to the constant oil price. And this action um, and result facilitated uh, the return of Nigeria, sovereign and government bonds onto the global capital markets. And as such, in 2013, Nigeria issued 1 million euro bonds, which was oversubscribed, which showed a keen interest and risk capital for the country as a whole from the international investment community. Uh, furthermore, at this stage, there's no evidence that frontier mar market would fare worse when the U.S. phase out its asset purchase program and eventually high interest rates. Finally, like most uh, sub-Saharan Africa, 
African countries, Nigeria was not affected by the global uh, uh, market volatilities due to this lack of integration in the global uh, capital markets, poor, infra and the poor infrastructure of the country, increasing transportation and trading costs, and limite limiting intra-regional trading is restricting the potential economic growth of the country. Furthermore, poor access to banking uh, for small businesses and low income households limit growth potential of the country and national security. So I will cover now the access to banking services and products uh, for Nigerian SMEs and low-income households. Access to uh, finance and is a major obstacle for business growth and improved infrastructure due uh, to turn uh, and in, to in turn facilitate business and secure employment among the white population. One of the main issues in Sub-Saharan Africa is to access um, banking products for the low-income households representing the majority of the population and the SME sector. The penetration of banking uh, products and services is low in relation to, this Niger uh, to Nigerians' potentials, and it is expected to improve significantly in the short term. The latter presents a huge component of the economy, given that the capital market are sufficiently developed to provide funding and channel savings for and from every Nigerian citizen. Looking through the annual reports of banks approved by the Central Bank of Nigeria, most banks cater for the corporate sector and the SME sector, and less so for the retail sector, which seems required to be um, built out and present some uh, tremendous uh, opportunities for growth. On the one hand, by developing access to funding, Nigeria has the ability to create jobs, to support its economic growth, and to transform from the informal economy into a formal economy, which is of paramount importance to extract taxes to support redistribution at national, governmental, and federal levels. With a strong literate population in key region expected to grow further in a possible turn, Nigeria has a duty and an opportunity to absorb a growing pot uh, potential workforce by continuous economic diversification away from the oil and gas industry and by continu continuing to drive employment um, in the telecom sector, in manufacturing, tr uh, tourism, and the agriculture. Re the regards to the later sector, Nigeria benefits from the large unused arable land, a large number of uncultivated cropland and favorable weather conditions, and can therefore develop downstream and upstream uh, agro processing industries such as food and beverage manufacturing, wood products to ensure food security and exportation to and outside the ECOWAS uh, to maintain economic prosperity, to ensure reallocation of wealth among the large population and national security, and to generate more revenues to satisfy the international demand. Aliko Dangote um, has shown that it is possible to develop a manufacturing industry domestically and cross-border. Uh, as, uh, as an example as well, the telecommunication sector has created uh, th um, about 3 million jobs between 2002 and 2010. Further, uh, furthermore, Nigeria will be able to, at governmental and federal level, to improve education and vocational training to adapt the professional education of the youth to the need of the real economy of the public and private sector. As most African uh, countries, Nigeria experiences a high unemployment uh, rate for the youth. This has led to cases of armed robbery, uh, Oshtes taking for ransom, illicit drug dealing uh, and addiction, militancy in the Niger Delta, the religious militancy for Boko Haram and human trafficking for uh, prostitution mainly. Um, furthermore, due to the low penetration of banking products and services among the Nigerian population, the banks cannot gather customers' uh, data for the creation of a credit bureau, the subsequent collateral valuation, and the fair calibration of pricing of loans. However, a lack of a stronger and more flexible property right could, could affect the availability of collateral, preventing small business, uh, businesses from uh, borrowing expanding their activities and hiring new staff to reduce unemployment and increase formal employment. Although the, uh, the 1978 Land Use Act delegated authority over the allocation of land 
the of land allocation to the 36 states and the local governments in an effort to ensure that rural and urban population had access to uh, had access and secure tenure to land. They fought to ensure. Um, the measure introduced obstacles to access and own land and did not widely materialize uh, to the improvement in real estate valuation for like, collateral. For this matter, the Nigerian government and the Central Bank of Nigeria introduced a scheme to facilitate and encourage financial intermediation towards SME and low-income households in order to bolster and improve an, uh, uh, to bolster an important economic sector and to maintain political stability on food and national security. I can see, as an example, the 200 billion uh, Naira agriculture credit scheme and the 600 billion Naira Nigerian setting based risk management system for, the, for agricultural lending. This scheme provides guarantees and uh, incentives via its banks in underwriting loans to the uh, agricultural sector. The Nigerian government has also put in place um, the SME uh, credit scheme uh, guarantee scheme, the SMECGS, to enhance to enhance lending to the SME sector. Uh, in the Nigerian economy by providing guarantee to banks for credit granted to SMEs. Thus, although some observers have noted that some banks were slow in participating in this scheme or providing finance for the large scale physical infrastructure project with access to electricity, um, which means uh, it limits economic growth prospects on, um, and uh, poverty reduction objectives set in the United Nations Millennium Development Goals, they strongly believe that Nigeria is on the right path to become self-sufficient in agricultural products and to build out a sustainable commercial agro-industry agro for the national and international demand, provided that access to electricity and road management are improved swiftly. Uh, in conclusion, um, in this section, we've seen that Nigeria has a better functioning banking system following the reforms um, undertaken in 2009-2010. Nevertheless, it still fares poorly internationally in its credit intermediation role, as the financial sector is still mirrored by poor governance, uh, corporate governance, a death of information about the credit worthiness of borrowers. Uh, capitaliz capitalization of banks in relation to its risk profile improved, thanks to the sale, on legacy, um, the the sale of legacy bad loans to Amcom, Thanks to better uh, regulatory enforcement, credit oversight, and risk management strategy remains patchy, and there's, there's still a high concentration of credit risk in the corporate sector, mostly in the oil and gas and telecom sectors. Notwithstanding, uh, Nigeria has ample uh, foreign reserves, thanks mainly to its large current account surplus and strong inflows of FDI in recent years. Uh, in addition the, to the Nigerian uh, Central Bank's foreign reserve holdings, Nigeria has an excess crude oil account which was created to build up additional foreign reserve for implementing counter-cyclical measures during periods of low in oil income. And the, the fund stood at nearly $8 billion, $9 billion at the beginning of 2013, which has continued to decrease uh, in recent months due to the sharp drop in oil price. A sovereign health, uh, wealth fund has been signed into law with the goal of investing some of this holding in higher yielding, uh, yielding investments. Um, and also one of the major issues as well nowadays, although the uh, Nigerian import cover was around 14 months at the, at the end of 2012, it has decreased uh, significantly due to the, uh, sh um, the drop in oil, uh, oil prices. Uh, um, having said that, the Sovereign Wealth Fund could continue to support diversification of the economy, to create formal employment, and thus to avert security crisis from un unemployed people attracted by violence and extremist, extremist groups, and to adapting the funding and guarantee, scheme, uh, guarantee schemes to encourage lending being un underwritten to the agricultural sector without with a high potential for growth and, and uh, contribution to the overall economy. 
the f next um, um, we will uh, the um, the further privatization of state-owned companies could facilitate the management on state assets and introduce some form of efficiency at the macro and micro level. Uh, privatization of SEOs. Uh, in most, um, based on my uh, experience as a credit analyst and my research, there's some pros and cons for uh, privatization, and both uh, sides are valid, I would say. In, uh, in most economics and finance uh, academic research, it appears to be a strong case for privatization to the advantage of the market economy to leave space for the private sector as observed over the long term following the collapse of the Soviet Union and the Iron Wall. The former communist economies have converted to the virtue of the capitalist economy where the ECU were one, one by one privatized. Even China introduced uh, some form of market economy from the, um, from the 80s. And uh, as explained by Lucia Venga, an economist at the OECD in 2004, and by Musa Samb, Francophone African countries started their privatization process in the late 80s, followed by some Lusophone and Anglophone African countries. According to McKinsey Global Institute, Nigeria privatized more than 116 enterprises between 1999 and 2006. Um, the one of the pros for uh, the pros for the privatization of ECOs are the following: in a country like Nigeria or the countries in Sub-Saharan Africa. OCOs are beset by bad management, corporate, and corporate governance, the provision of services is not reliable and secured. They, they are also often unproductive and inefficient. Thus, they, um, thus there are some opportunities for investment in industry undergoing privatization, such as, such as electricity provision, mining, agriculture, financial services, manufacturing in order to diversify the revenue base of the government in the form of tax receipt and the structure of the national economy. It also reduces uh, government infrastructure. And according to the website of the Bureau of Public Enterprise um, in Abuja, it is expected that more um, um, that it executed, it executed a series of transactions. The government, uh, the federal government had planned to sell some thermal plants, hydropower plants, electricity distribution plant in 2013. Um, should those transactions properly executed with regards to the current legislation, this planned transaction could significantly reduce the chronic short, uh, power shortages, constraining the economic activities of Nigeria. There was also an electri um, um, electricity company which was listed uh, at the same time in uh, at the NSC and um, and the LSE, the London Stock Exchange, but to date the, the, the electricity shortage has not been improved. On the contrary, it has worsened in recent weeks in Nigeria. But there's also uh, an, uh, an expectation that um, privatization of SEOs or state-owned companies could lead to the increased employment uh, in a particular sector, as most skilled workers are requ required. To be successful, uh, privatization should be adapted to the specific needs of the sector in question and follow proper sequencing. Um, I have um, also a case against privatization of SEOs. One of the main reasons against privatization has been the fear of massing job losses and the maintenance of access to the key public and vital services such as water, education, health, transportation, electricity and telecommunication for the poorest segments of the population. In the case of Nigeria, the legacy of privatization has been mixed. Privatization has aggravated the job security and has increased unemployment and the privatization of NEPA, the Nigerian Electri um, Electric uh, Power Authority now called uh, power holding company of Nigeria has not led to material improvement of electricity provision and distribution 
And there's, there's also a joke in Nigeria of, for NEPA. It is, it is also known as never expect power. Um, and one could also argue that privatization is not conclusive to growth or national stability, as we have observed in Europe in the 1920s, in the 70s, and the years following the sovereign debt crisis in Europe and the collapse of uh, Lehman Brothers in 2008. So the, um, the few teaching from the um, and result from uh, from privatization of Sub-Saharan Africa. In his research, uh, Thierry uh, Books, an economist at the IFC, draws a comprehensive uh, series of uh, relevant impact of, of privatization on government financial flows, enterprise performance, employment, FDI, and local capital markets, ownership, regulation, competition, private, and consumer benefits, and income distribution. In a short run, uh, privatization has had a minimal one-off impact on the government budget. On average, the overall remaining level of subsidization after more than a decade of privatization is an open question mark, although there's limited evidence that direct subsidies decreased dramatically. The impact of privatization on tax revenue has been mixed at macroeconomic level. Privatization results uh, have generally been positive in the manufacturing, industrial, and the service sector. Firm turnover and profitability have generally increased immediately following privatization, but the evidence is mixed regarding the sustainability of the initial post-privatization upswing. Notwithstanding measurements problem, private investments has generally increased following privatization following public investment. Employment has been adversely affected, mainly in the period leading up to the privatization or in, case of liquidation, in the case of liquidation. Even if the workforce of privatized or liquidated firm diminished in relative term, there's, been, there's not been massive layoffs in absolute term. In some countries, retrenchment packages have uh, become a serious issue, however. Although the general trend is a continuous decline in, in, unemploy in employment levels all the time, there are few cases where employment increased in the years following privatization reflecting good performance or new business of, and new business opportunities. Stock markets have play, played a limited role in privatization transactions despite some showcase transactions. Some uh, privatization have stimulated embryonic stock uh, market activities in the short run. Local entrepreneurs have bought the majority of SMEs of the state-owned uh, enterprise. Large SEOs in the strategic sector such as uh, mining, public utilities, um, have almost invariably been taken over by foreign investors. As a rule, the larger transaction value, the higher the involvement of foreign investors. Whenever nationals purchase a public enterprise, they are more likely to buy it on credit rather than on a cash basis compared to foreign buyers with the, uh, with the potential default implications. In the first half of, uh, of the 90s, neither the regulatory framework nor the competition framework was developed as an integral part of the reforms. In the second half of the 90s, when large utilities were privatized in some countries, all the regulatory frameworks were put in place. Enforcement problems have limited the effectiveness for both regulation and competition in several countries. There doesn't, there doesn't appear to be any association between privatization, poverty, and income distribution trends. On average, the price increases following uh, the privatization of some public utility services have only marginally affected the poor living in urban areas. On average, the effect of privatization on the poor living in rural areas has been neutral, except in a limited number of negative cases. So, uh, in conclusion, the Nigerian experience have, has been mixed and uh, has not led to material improvement in economic security of uh, citizens. Um, um, and is, uh, the model, is this model adaptable, uh, applicable on the, to the Nigerian economy to the full? We have seen that the, in this part that privatization presents some significant advantages, but some con in some uh, countries well anchored in the market economy with proper legislation for deregulation and li li 
liberalization and corporate governance rule in place. I've chosen a third way, like France or Norway, with an equal participa participation of the private initiative and the state ownership to allocate resources equally to the wider population and to ma maintain social cohesion. Unfortunately, the wave of privatization which started in the 80s and 90s in Nigeria under the impulse of the IMF and the World Bank did not materialize in fully reaching the United Nations Millennium uh, Development Goal targets. As explained in, uh, in a research paper published by the Journal of Art, Science and Commerce in October 2010, the privatization programs led to a number of constraints in Nigeria. And as such, these constraints consist of policy inconsistencies of the government, poor enlightenment, hailing state of earmark enterprise for privatization, use debt of uh, SEOs, corruption, lack of transparency. And finally, Justin uh, Yifulin favors an indigenous economic policy away from uh, subscription and structural programs dictated by the IMF and World Bank from the, uh, uh, from the 80s to the eight, 90s for the development, uh, developing country in the world and aligned with the local economic realities. And I would like to introduce an idea I had um, to um, to apply um, the social market wirtschaft to the, the or the social market economy in Nigeria, uh, and one of the tenets of the in applying the social market wirtschaft in Nigeria, because Nigeria has a federal structure like in Germany. So, uh, just to remind you what the social market wirtschaft uh, is, the social uh, market wirtschaft or social uh, market economy was implemented uh, after the Second World War in. Um, by an economist called uh, Muller Armark. Uh, the aim of the social market economy is not only uh, the construction of a functional economy, but also to secure the rights of the individuals and social welfare to help the weak, the needy, which means that the population prosperity and consumpt consumptions are possible. The view of the social market economy is not in contradiction with the current market economy conducted by the Nigerian government and the fundamental values of the Nigerians. The economic policy could lead to more social welfare, peace for the Nigerian communities and enhance coexistence. In conclusion, job creation to secure uh, peace and security is not only a priority of Nigerians or other African nations, but also to uh, that of um, there's also a priority for OECD countries. It unless of the youth could not only trigger revolution, popular uprising, but also could lead to riots. I experienced in major British cities in summer of 2011. It could also increase militancy, recruitment for Boko Haram or religious extremism groups as seen in France, Britain, where some youth decided to travel to Syria, for instance. One of the key re issues for the overall prosperity and security of Nigeria is to allocate sufficient resources at all levels to privatize youth education, professional skills. They need to thrive professionally to sustain the economic prosperity of the country and to avoid the skills mismatch. If anybody has a question. Au début de votre conférence, vous avez parlé de démutualisation. Vous pourriez peut-être expliquer en quoi ça consiste Une société mutuelle, en fait, c'est où il y a des. En fait, c'est le contraire de. C'est le contraire de l'actionnariat. Donc, les, la, la société est aux, mains, est aux mains de certaines entreprises, en fait, qui, qui dirigent la, 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 le stock exchange, en fait. Je suis désolée pour le franglais parce que j'utilise très peu le français au travail au jour le jour, en fait. Merci. Euh, 
Et donc l'intérêt en fait de privatiser ce genre de compagnie, c'est d'améliorer de, de, le corporate governance, c'est également la, la manière dont les, la, la transparence aussi de, de, des entreprises et surtout pour les, sur les marchés financiers, euh, la, la transparence est de plus en plus requise. Parce que s'il y a un black boss, en fait les investisseurs ne sont pas confortables non plus et, euh, et en fait il n'y a aucun contrôle. Hey, good afternoon. Thank you for your intervention. Uh, firstly, I, um, well, I have a question, and after I have a, it's not exactly regarding to what has been written because it was like a thorough presentation, but when it comes to Africa and the finance, isn't the first issue the cultural bias between the Western idea of finance and the African, I mean, Africa is a large and diverse continent, but doesn't, isn't there a bias before you can apply this financial sketch and scheme to apply it and make it work in Africa? But which bias are you talking about? Are you the talking cultural about bias, because the, the, the microfinancing system throughout the ages in Africa, where I've been traveled north, south, east, west, is totally different than the idea of what people can do with money. People don't want to go to the banks. so. Isn't it first off educating people of the worthiness of going to the bank before thinking finance? Um, um, I, I think it depends who you talk to. Because if you talk to uh, people uh, living in rural area, they, um, um, they don't have access to banking. So therefore, they tend to save the money under the, the mattress. Or they use the system of Isusu or uh, Tontine in uh, Francophone Africa, whereby each person in, uh, among uh, a wider clan or family, they save money for, for the others, and then they, they can channel the money when there's a big investment to be made. But there's, so, there's a problem with the bank as well, um, and the banks as well who don't trust these type of individuals because they think they don't have a, a stable source of revenue. You only lend to someone who has a steady source of revenues. And also on the other side, the, the, um, those protection consumers, they don't trust the system as well because they've seen a lot of bank collapsing like in 2008, 2009, where some, uh, some people have seen their savings wiped out, and people nowadays have access to the internet, and they see what has happened in some Western countries as well. And also, um, I know that there are many schemes at the moment as well. They try to replicate what has been done, for instance, in Kenya, Ethiopia as well, the access to, bank, uh, to banking via telephone. But in Nigeria, there's a big, uh, there's a big regulatory order because ter uh, terrorists or people who want to abduct, they tend to use their mobile phone. And so why MTA has got, f uh, got fined um, the last few weeks. And I think also, um, yeah, it's a, it's a matter of so educating the, the customers that what they can get from the, from, the, from the bank. But I think, I can only speak for Nigeria, but I think in Nigeria people are aware that what they can get from the bank and the type of um, services they can get. Because what matters to the people is they create their own job. Because it's not everybody who will get a, j a job in one of those top corporates or first hundreds. And even at universities nowadays, they, they taught that um, they have programs as well where they have to learn to, to create their own jobs. It's not like the same as in uh, Western Europe, for instance, that everybody expects to have a job when you graduated. That's not the case in, uh, in Nigeria, for instance. I can only speak for Nigeria because I know it more than all other countries. But I know in uh, East Africa, there's, there's been a big push in financial inclusion by, um, with the mobile banking, M-Pesa, et cetera, which has spread out across East Africa. And in Ethiopia, there's a lady called um, Dr. Um, Eleni Gabriadine, who created a stock exchange um, uh, where the, um, the farmers who live in remote area, they can access to prices and they can access to the end consumer instead of taking the road and then they're not sure they will be able to sell the products. And this model has been replicated in Ghana. And the, Ni the Nigerian government as well had the scheme where they, they bought a lot of mobile phones for farmers in remote areas. So it's a way to educate people slowly but surely. <laughs> Voilà. Euh, moi, je vous remercie pour votre présentation, que j'ai malheureusement prise en cours. Donc, je n'ai pas eu le temps de comprendre exactement euh, ce dont il a été euh, question dans le cœur de la présentation. Mais 
je comprends que quand, il est, quand on parle de la finance et qu'on qu lit euh, la finance à la sécurité nationale, à la sécurité sociale, à la sécurité tout court, il s'agit d'une finance qu'on veut qui soit une solution pour nos populations, qui soit une solution pour euh, les utilisateurs de la finance, les destinataires de la finance, et j'en passe. En Afrique, plus précisément, la banque traditionnelle n'a plus servi. On a expérimenté euh, les banques de détail, les banques commerciales. Euh, on a expérimenté également la microfinance. On a, on a, et même plus récemment, on continue d'expérimenter la mésofinance. Mais est-ce que l'avenir ne réside pas, notamment pour les pays pauvres, dans la finance participative le crowdfunding, qui consiste d'une part à ce qu'on identifie les épargnants, des gens qui ont l'argent, qui ont les moyens, hein, qui en ont même un peu trop, qui ne savent pas à quoi euh, donc, euh, destiner euh, l'utilisation de leur argent. Et d'un autre côté, on a des gens qui sont porteurs de projets, mais qui n'ont pas le moyen. Alors la finance participative qui se propose d'être comme une plateforme qui met en contact des épargnants, qui sont d'un côté et d'un autre côté des porteurs de projets, comme l'a fait Barack Obama pour, pour euh, financer sa campagne électorale, est-ce que l'avenir, finalement, pour, euh, pour aider donc, le continent africain n'est pas, euh, à votre avis, de se remettre à la finance participative euh, Oui, je pense certainement, mais je pense que l'avenir des le business model de certaines banques en fait, est à risque de nos jours, parce que beaucoup de, de plus en plus, euh, on passe par le mobile banking. Donc forcément, le, le concept de brick and mortar d'une banque qui est considéré comme brick and mortar n'a plus lieu d'être, parce que beaucoup de, de, de sociétés, de, de, par exemple, en, je sais qu'en Angleterre ou même dans d'autres pays, il y a, il y a, des, il y a des, par exemple des chaînes de supermarchés qui, ouvrent, qui ont des services bancaires, qui proposent des services bancaires directement par le mobile phone, et aussi le, le système du bitcoin également, pourrait justement aller sur le modèle dans, que vous décrivez. Je pense que le, le, le business model des banques est plus à risque qu'autre chose. Hein, et, et ça va plus aller dans ce que vous, vous venez de décrire. Et, et aussi le système du euh, mobile banking. Mais le problème du mobile banking, c'est euh, comment contrôler les flux. Donc, ça, 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 ça m'entraîne donc à, à poser un, une autre question. Euh, donc, le second volet de ma question désormais, toujours sur l'aspect finance et sécurité. C'est que est-ce que les banques, d'après euh, votre connaissance du terrain nigérien, est-ce que les banques euh, nigériennes pratiquent ce qu'on appelle les mesures de vigilance à l'égard du client Parce qu'aujourd'hui, que ce soit le mobile banking, que ce soit le banking traditionnel, ce qui se pose, c'est qu'on est dans une économie monétaire. La manipulation de, euh, de, de l'argent en espèces euh, fait courir des risques, effectivement, euh, de sécurité financière de blanchiment d'argent, de financement de terrorisme, et j'en passe. Alors, les banques désormais sont encouragées à adopter des mesures de vigilance à l'égard des clients et à, à améliorer leur système de renseignement hein, euh, dont, euh, 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 qui leur permettent d'ailleurs d'assurer euh, une certaine traçabilité des opérations financières, toute entrée d'argent, sortie d'argent et le flux, tout ça, et qui permet d'ailleurs de savoir après euh, quels sont les utilisateurs de services financiers qui sont impliqués dans les actes de financement terroriste, d'enrichissement de, illicite, ou ainsi de suite et tout. Donc, euh, est-ce que, à votre avis, euh, la sécurité financière euh, et l'économie monétaire, ce n'est pas euh, deux concepts ou deux terminologies antinomiques Est-ce qu'on peut parler d'économie de, 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 monétaire telle qu'on est en train d'évoquer de, de, sans parler de, des risques que cela peut engendrer au plan de la sécurité En fait, le thème de mon papier, ce n'était pas vraiment la sécurité monétaire, c'est plus la sécurité par rapport euh, aux problèmes euh, récurrents que sont les problèmes de terrorisme ou d'enlèvement. Euh, et, et justement, depuis, quand Jonathan, euh, Goodlatte Jonathan était au pouvoir, le, les, euh, les, euh, les problèmes d'enlèvement de gens euh, dans le Delta se sont calmés. Et il a perdu les élections en partie parce qu'il n'a pas su régler les problèmes de Boko Haram. Donc les gens ont préféré prendre Bouhari au pouvoir parce que c'était un ancien militaire et parce qu'il est, est Foulani et Aoussa. Donc tout le monde pensait qu'il allait régler la situation très rapidement. Mais en fait, l'économie est en train de se détériorer et la sécurité ne s'est pas améliorée. Concernant la sécurité financière, justement, au Nigeria, quand on veut acheter une puce, il faut qu'elle soit enregistrée au nom d'une personne. Et c'est une des raisons pour lesquelles NTN, c'est une société de mobile sud-africaine, a eu une, une amende à payer de je ne sais plus combien de, de millions de dollars et, qui, et ils ont essayé de négocier leur dette, justement, euh, cette, cette amende. 
parce qu'ils n'étaient pas d'accord, parce qu'ils avaient oublié qu'il fallait éteindre, switch off les, les puces, et elles n'étaient plus utilisées à partir d'un certain moment où justement les déclarer. Et, mais justement, mais je ne pense pas que le mobile banking soit aussi développé au Nigeria qu'il ne l'est au, au, au Kenya. Parce que les, les problématiques de sécurité ne sont pas les mêmes. Et je pense qu'en termes de, 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 de gouvernance et de financement de, de terrorisme, je pense que c'est beaucoup plus dur dans des états, dans, des états, dans les pays frontières, parce qu'ils ont tendance justement déjà pour les règles plus prudentielles à être beaucoup plus sévères que dans certains pays de l'OCDE notamment concernant le tier 1 ou total capital ratio. Je suis désolée, je ne sais pas le dire en français. Et, euh, et également euh, tout ce qui est flux monétaire, etc. Parce qu'ils sont beaucoup plus, on les surveille beaucoup plus, donc ils ont tendance à faire plus attention. Et ouais. même, j'ai même une amie, par exemple, qui travaille pour un fonds de pension, je ne peux pas le dire lequel, qui, va, qui voyage souvent en Europe, et un de ses clients lui a dit récemment en fait, que les... Les, les blanchiments d'argent sale ne sont pas dans les endroits où sont, se, ont lieu dans les endroits où qui sont censés être les plus sécures en fait d'un point de vue euh, règlement euh, règles euh, règle prudentielles et de corporate governance. Je pense que si quelqu'un veut faire du blanchiment d'argent sale, il ne va pas aller au Nigeria. Il y a d'autres pays pour le faire. Ah bon hein, Parce que moi je pense que euh, c'est vrai. On parle de la finance comme le moteur de la croissance économique au Nigeria. Oui. Moi j'ai tendance plutôt à me préoccuper. Est-ce que la finance n'est même pas le problème la sécurité financière au Nigeria. Parce que à force de trop comprendre le système financier, le, le Nigérian est désormais capable de, de faire une doublure du système, du système et puis de dissimuler euh, carrément l'origine de ces fonds. L'exemple que je prends le plus près de moi, je travaille au groupe intergouvernemental d'action contre le blanchiment d'argent et contre le financement du terrorisme d'institutions spécialisées de la CDAO. Et euh, il nous est arrivé de voir que euh, le Nigeria, en quelques euh, 4 ou 5 ans seulement, euh, est parvenu à créer donc une institution similaire mais virtuelle qui n'existe pas en réalité mais qui se comporte comme, exactement comme notre institution et, et, et qui propose des services financiers qui, 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 qui promet de garantir la sécurité de fonds euh, des utilisateurs et ainsi de suite et tout et, et, et en empruntant donc la notoriété, la réputation, l'image positive de, de l'institution, ils parviennent effectivement à, à, à arnaquer pas mal de personnes. Je pense que c'est la trop grande compréhension du système financier qui, qui les amène effectivement à pouvoir déjouer le système ordinaire traditionnel. Je vous remercie. Euh, pour, euh, pour cette institution, je ne la connais pas vraiment, mais je ne me demande pas en fait, si c'est dû au fait que les états de l'ECOAS, de la CDO, ne sont pas vraiment intégrés. Donc forcément, ils ont créé une structure propre pour pouvoir surveiller leur, leur marché, plutôt de, que de coopérer. Parce que la plupart des pays de l'ECOAS de ne coopèrent pas autant qu'ils devraient le, le faire. Je pense que ça doit être là, mais je pense, mais je pense que plus on voit les... Euh, euh, je pense que plus il y a des statistiques pour montrer qu'il y a des blanchiments, je pense que plus c'est une manière de montrer que le, que le système est robuste et il marche bien. Et également, mais ça c'est une hypothèse. Mais, mais moi je pense que c'est dû surtout au fait, s'ils ont créé une, stru une structure parallèle, c'est parce qu'ils ne faisaient pas confiance au, au système euh, de l'ECOAS ou au système francophone, telles que je, telles les conversations que je peux avoir avec d'autres Nigériens en fait. De, de, quand ils me donnent leur avis de ce qu'ils pensent, en fait, de ce qui se passe en dehors de leur, de leur pays, au sein de la sous-région. We are going to end up here. Thank you for coming and for your attention.